Okay, so the first problem in chapter 11, um, we have researchers are researching the differences between males and females for common annoyances. Uh, it, the question, are you annoyed by people who repeatedly check their mobile phone uh, while having an in-person conversation? We have a certain success rate for males, a certain success rate for females. That means this is a proportion, a population proportion test. And it says, does the evidence suggest a higher proportion of females are annoyed by this behavior? Okay, for the first one, we're looking for what are the actual proportions. So that's pretty simple to do. It does say females and males, respectively, which means the first one's going to be females, the next one's going to be males. So let's start with the females, 595. So 204 responded yes to, out of 595. It's going to be 0.3429. Okay, and then the next one is going to be 165 out of 515. Gives us 3204. All right. Now, can we actually use a hypothesis test? Well, um, it doesn't matter if they're normally distributed. All we need to check is this thing. Let's first check that. We'll do the female first, I guess. This is going to be times 1 minus 0 0.3429 times the proportion or the um, um, sample size, 595. Definitely greater than 10. Okay, now for the males, 3204 times 1. Oops. 1 minus 0.3204 times the sample size, which is 515. Definitely greater than 10 as well. So that means that's correct. They are independent. Um, they're definitely independent because they're males and females. They're not going to be dependent upon each other. Uh, <clears throat> and there's most definitely way more than 515 and 595 females on the Earth. So that's definitely true as well. So we can use uh, the hypothesis test, and we always assume that P1 equals P2. In other words, they're the same. And in this case, we're asking, does the evidence suggest a higher proportion of females? Uh, and it says here, let P1 represent the proportion of females. So is P1 greater than P2? That's what we want to know. That's going to be our, our um, alternative hypothesis. Okay, sampling distribution, p hat female minus p hat male. Um, we need to find the mean and standard deviation. Well, the mean in this case, if you go into the textbook, you're going to see that the mean is not based on um, p hat, uh, the, the proportions. It's actually based on the population. So if you go to the third page here, you see that mu, the, the mean, is based on P1 minus P2, and there's no hat there, so it's based on the actual proportions. And the proportions, we, we assume for the null hypothesis that they're equal. So if they're equal and they're subtracting, that means the mean's gonna be zero. So our uh, assumed mean is zero. The standard deviation, however, if you go back, <clears throat> you need to have a point estimate. Um, because we don't we don't know what p1 and p2 are and that point estimate comes from right here it's a pooled estimate and you can see in the bottom portion here it tells you what the uh, standard deviation is uh, for the z um, all in all it's it's a bit you, you can plug things in it's not it's not too hard to comp to uh, compute but um, you can just use StatCrunch to do all the work for you and that's what we're going to be using here so we want uh, stat proportion stats with two samples now. We do have a summary of the data. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, sample one is P1, which we know is for females, not males. So we need to make sure we do the correct ones. 204 was yes, 595 was, was total. Um, 165 was yes out of 515. Um, the hypothesis test, uh, P1 minus P2 is the same thing as if you add P2 to the other side, you get P1 equals P2. And then here we have P1 minus P2. 
um, we had before was P1 greater than P2. If you subtract P2 to the uh, left-hand side, you get P1 minus P2 is greater than zero. So that's what you type in here. A little confusing, but um, just you know, all you're doing is just moving the P2 to the other side by subtraction, and you should have what you need. Okay, compute that, and you'll see we have the standard error right there as uh, 0 0.0284. 0.284. All right, now to find um, the normal model, you can see here we have 0 0.0225. Like, where does that number come from? I'm pretty sure it comes from the subtraction of these two things. So that that's what the mean, you, you might think the mean is, um, but it's actually not, uh, it's just zero. So we're gonna take 0 0.3429 minus 0 0.3204. And that's where the point, uh, 0 0.0225 comes from, is we're just subtracting the two estimated proportions. And so now we're trying to figure out What's the normal model that, that describes this behavior? Um, we want to know if P1 is greater than P2. If it were, that means that um, this would actually be positive. And we're looking to see if it's going to be at least this or greater than in the area, which is what C is here. It's kind of what you always expect, either A or C. That's the area you want to find because if that's if that's um, small enough, that means that um, you have statistically significant numbers, and therefore it, it is different. Um, you can assume it's different. So that's that's what we're looking for here. Now, the test statistic and the p-value; these we've all already found with StatCrunch. You can use the formulas in the book; that's fine, but uh, it's going to be a lot harder to get. Um, the right value. So we want 0.79 for the test statistic. 0.79. Okay, p value is 0 0.214. 0 0.214. And now we interpret the p value. So if the population proportions are equal, then one would expect the sample different difference proportion to be, um, let's see, if they are actually equal, then it's gonna be greater than the, the p-value, or, or um, in other words, out of, out of 1,000 repetitions, it's gonna be 214 out of 1,000. I believe that's correct. Because that would mean that the proportion is within the, the, the normal, um, like the normal area of the distribution of the, of the normal curve. And so you would expect that to be like, well, that, that's just the variance between the sample, um, the actually sampling population that you have. Now we are assuming a 0 0.01 level of significance. Our p-value is well, well above that. Therefore we do not suggest there is sufficient evidence, or sorry, there is not sufficient evidence um, that they're annoyed more. So do not reject, let's check it. And that's all correct. Okay, let's move along. Okay, uh, organization surveyed 1,500 adults about asking about a certain roar. Uh, do you believe made a right or wrong decision using military force? Uh, 1,090 stated that they made a right decision. This is again a population proportion. In 2008, they asked the same question to 1,500 adults. Um, and 580 believe they made a right decision. So we're talking about two separate populations. They're separated by years. Um, most, most definitely, you wouldn't assume that they're the same people. All we're going to do is construct a 90% confidence interval. Well, this is very easy to do in StatCrunch. You could do the work again in in uh, using the the formulas, but we have a calculator that, that does all the work for us, so it makes it much faster. Okay. Let's see, P of 2003 and P of 2008, that's the important thing here. Since P of 2003 is first, that's gonna be sample one. So we had uh, 1090 successes out of 1500 for 2003. 
In 2008, it was 580 out of 1500. Okay, we want a confidence interval, and it said it wanted a 90% confidence interval. All right, let's compute that. And here you can see our lower limit and upper limit, uh, 0 0.3120, 0 0.3120. Zero round to three places. That's actually going to end up being three one. No, three three one two. Yep, three one two. Upper is going to be point three six eight. All right. Interpret the ninety percent confidence interval. Um, we have the interval, and we're we're assuming there's a nice ninety percent confidence, not ten percent, ninety percent confidence that the difference between 2003 and 2008 made the right decision is between the upper and lower is greater than the lower bound. No, it's between between the, the upper and lower bound. Um, so A is the interpretation. Let's check it. And that's correct. Okay, moving right along. All right. Uh, data represents muzzle velocity in rounds fired from a 15 uh, 155 millimeter gun okay two measurements were recorded using two different measuring devices and this is what we get so it's i think it's the same shot measured between two different devices okay and it asks why are these matched paired data that's because uh, I'm not taking by the same instrument, I'm taking by two different measuring devices. It's the same round that was fired in every trial. And because it was the same round, that means the two of them are they're not they're not independent things. They're 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 dependent upon the same thing. So um all measurements round fired from the same gun. I'm trying to make sure this is the right one. I'm selecting two measurements, A and B are taken on the same round oh yeah, yeah yeah sorry that's that's what i meant to say I, th I thought that's what this one was saying but it's two measurements from the same round that was fired so that's why they are matched pair okay is there a difference uh, in the measurements of the muzzle velocity between the two devices uh, a normal probability plot and box plot of the data indicate that the differences are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. So we can use um, the, the hypothesis test and we can, can continue. We don't have to worry about anything. This is an, a small amount of observations. That's the reason why they had to mention that. Um, we have to have a much higher one to be able to assume that. Of course, it says to assume it, so we're good to go there. All right. Um, in this case, the matched pair design is where you take the difference between the two, and that's what you tested on. This is actually kind of like a changing this into a single uh, population test. Um, in this case, it's not, it's not a population; it's a mean. But uh, it's just just like where you have a single um, a single uh, thing for for each observation, rather than having two per. You subtract them, and that makes it a um, the normal distribution mode, just a single population rather than two. Hopefully that makes sense. What we're asking is, is there a difference? Well, yeah, you assume there is no difference, so the mean is zero. And now we want to see, is there a difference? Now, let me make sure of that. Is there a difference? That just means that it doesn't equal zero. We don't care if it's uh, greater than or less than. We just want to know if it's not equal to zero. And so we can continue with the hypothesis test. This is going to be a t statistic. This is, we're going to use the t test for this because it's a mean. Okay, open in StatCrunch. The data, uh, or sorry, stat. We have t stats because again, it's for mean, and they are paired. And they're not two independent samples. They are paired data. So you go for paired. The first sample is in column A. Second is in column B. Now, um, because this has a has the textbook, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it to find the critical value because it wants us wants the test statistic or sorry the the critical value for that process test. 
and it says that alpha is at 0 0.01 level of significance. So we need to make sure we have that in there as well. Just a second here. Okay, so we want, uh, it said 0 0.1, so, Zero, not equal to zero. I think that's all good to go. Okay, the uh, T stat is negative zero point five one three. Two places would be negative zero point five one. It doesn't actually have to be negative. I think it can is it's positive in your assuming that you're using both um you think normally you would put negative 0 0.51 and 0 0.51 but um i think it, it doesn't say these are commas so i'm guessing it doesn't need that okay the critical values this one this one's what i'm looking for um so, so i do want a negative here i think the critical values are going to be both so we have 4.03 4.03 and negative 4.03 because this this is a two-tailed test so we're going to have two two sides of this and so you don't have two critical values um, this comes from this table right we have this tail for the right end we also gonna have a left end as well that's why though you need two critical values for that uh, okay what's your conclusion regarding it Um, the critical value is, is pretty large. And, um, the T statistic is within the critical value because they're, they're so, they're so large out there. So that means that we would not reject, or we, we do not reject the null hypothesis because this value is between the critical values. So do not reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence. Um, the, the level of significance was pretty low in general. So that you know makes sense you can also see this by looking at the um the range of values the confidence interval if i edit this and go for a confidence interval instead and since this is a 0 0.01 level of alpha we get it's the same thing as a 0.99 um, confidence interval uh, compute that and you see the lower limit is negative 10 the upper limit is 7 or it was really 8 and the um the uh, value is between that. So yeah, we're, we're definitely within um, the confidence interval. So uh, let's see, it wants two places, negative 10.33. That's uh, gonna be 8.00. One can be 99% confident that the mean difference in measurement lies in the interval found above. Zero is in there, so it's you know, you can assume that they're the same, same population. Okay, draw a box plot once again. Um, you don't do this by hand. You can just use StatCrunch. Uh, let's see if there's a box plot here. Yeah. You can see um, we have a line here just past zero. Um, four, this is very short on that end. It's not A. Looks like B. Okay, does the visual evidence support the results? Uh, yes, because zero is contained within this box plot. So we can assume that it's, it's reasonable to, that zero is in there. All right, let's check it. And that's all correct. All right, um, else for the effects of the DUI, uh, DUI simulator and certain reaction time in an emergency was measured with unimpaired vision and also while wearing a pair of special goggles. So there's nine teenagers and 
they bring this the vehicle to stop from a speed of 60. Okay, we and we're probably a box plot that are approximately normally distributed. So um again, this is a small sample size, just nine. So that's why they're sort of saying this. We can use the normal distribution um approximation. So um, we're good to go for that. Um, whether the student had unimpaired vision or wore goggles first was randomly selected. Why is this a good idea in designing the experiment? A uh, good idea in designing the experiment because reaction times are different. Sample size is not large enough. And that's not necessary. It's a good idea designing the experiment because it controls any learning that may occur during the simulator. Um, so that, that kind of takes away a... Um, one of the variables that might be uh, the, like one of the hidden variables um, in the in the system. So if you randomize that, then you won't have to worry about that portion of it. Okay, now all we're trying to do here is construct a 95% confidence interval and uh, see what we get. So this is our data. Let's open it in StatCrunch and go from there. Um, this is a matched pair because each one is is the same the same student. Um, but they're using different, uh, whether they're impaired or not. So that's why it's matched pair. Okay, so now let's look at TSTAT paired. All right, now, once again, we need to see computed as impaired minus normal. So that's important because in STATLAB, the normal is the first column. And it needs to be the second one here because it says impaired minus normal. It's always the first minus the second, so impaired minus normal. It wants a confidence interval and 95%. Compute that. And here we go. We get uh, 0 0.68 nearest thousands, so that's three places, 687. Okay, lower bound is 1.235. Okay, and state the conclusion. Well, uh, if there was, uh, if the reaction time was the same, then the mean difference would be zero, right? You take a look at the data, and you, you would expect the subtraction between these two to be zero, if there was actually a difference. Well, we did the confidence interval test and said that the mean between the two is between 0.6 and 1.2. And that means since zero is not in that interval, it's likely that the mean is higher than zero. It's higher and it's in, it's in this interval. That's what's likely. Therefore, there is sufficient evidence um, that there is a difference between breaking time between impaired and normal. And that's all correct. Okay, uh, we have a designated hitter that pitches for a bat for a um, that bats for a pitcher in League A. A designated hitter bats for a pitcher because the pitcher is typically a weaker um, hitter. In League B, the pitcher must do the batting. So commonly, League A um, results in more runs because a better batter bats for the pitcher. Okay, so in interleague plays. Uh, the League A pitcher must bat rather than having the designated hitter do so. So if there's more runs, one would expect League A teams to score more runs in League A than when visiting League B because the designated hitter is allowed in League A games, but if it's an interleague one, the designated hitter is not allowed. Okay, and then we're just going to test this validity. So we have some data. It wants a box plot first off, so go ahead and... Uh, open this in StatCrunch. Now, these are, of course, going to be paired. Um, sorry, it's not going to be paired because the the two games, the games that happen in each league are, are separate games. They're, they're not the same game. They're with the same people, but um, the games are separated. And so each one is, is, is a unique thing, like, like how, how you do in one game may not necessarily affect how you do in another game, especially between the different leagues. So it's it's two separate two separate um, populations that are independent of each other. That's the reason why we have two two um, box plots and everything. 
Okay. So we're going to have, again, we're talking about a mean here. So this is going to be a two sample mean. Um, we have the data. Column A is with the leagues uh, in A park and without the designated hitter. Um, I don't really care about this just yet. All I really care about is the box plot. So what you can actually do is just go, I guess you can just go stat um, box plot. And then we're going to do both columns. We want it to be horizontal. And there you go. That's, that's the box plot. That's what I should have done in the first place. So you see we have uh, two box plots. Uh, League A has three outliers, it looks like. League B doesn't. League A is also a little bit higher up, which so that kind of supports what we thought, that um, League A has a higher uh, average runs than League B without the designated hitter. So this is what we're looking for. And that's going to be um, graph A. Okay, does there appear to be a difference between the number of runs within these situations? Yeah, right? The mean looks to be higher up than the B. Sure, most of it overlaps, but it just looks like it is higher up. Plus, there's also outliers up there. So, yeah, it does. Yeah, League A appear to have higher runs than League B. Okay. Anyway, the hypothesis has maybe used and the mean number of runs scored. Uh, we don't care about the same sample size. That doesn't, that doesn't need to be the case. Um, the sample size is quite large. We've got, let's see, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 30 in each, so that, that's actually what we need, right? Um, so the sample size is large. Um, they are independent because they're different games. Uh, simple random, I believe it said, uh, uh, yeah, random sample. So that's good to go. And of course, we're only looking at a very small subset of games. I mean, there's, there's a lot of games that in this data set, but out of all the games you could select, this is definitely relatively small. Okay, so now we're going to actually set up the, the hypothesis test. Um, mu A represents the mean number of uh, runs scored by league A and mu B is the mean number of scores by league B. So we're going to assume that they're equal in the null hypothesis as always. And then we're going to now say that league A is greater than league B because league A allows for the designated hitter, which typically is a better a better um, hitter for, for the pitcher so that they're, it's more likely to get more runs. Um, and we're assuming that. We also can see that in the box plot, right? A, uh, the mean of A looks like it's higher than B. So that's what we're going to be testing here. Sorry, it's this one that we're testing. Okay. Um, now we can uh, do the hypothesis test here because we have the rest of what it wants. This is going to be a t-stat with two samples because they're, they're not paired, they're independent. So we're going to two samples and with the data. League A. League B, um, they're equal in the first case. If you subtract mu B on the other side, you get mu A is minus mu B is greater than zero. Okay, um, that's all we need. So let's let's go ahead and compute that. All right, T stat is two point four zero. Okay. P value is 0 0.001. Sorry, no, uh, 0 0.00, 0 0.010. 0 0.010, yeah. All right. The level of significance is 0 0.05. The p-value is less than the level of significance, therefore we reject H0. There is significant evidence um, that, or sorry, that there is sufficient evidence that, that um, League A does better, has better runs. 
Okay, now it wants a 95% confidence interval. Well, that can also be done here. Let's just go back to edit, change it to the confidence interval. 95 is what we want. And now you see the lower limit is point three places, so 318. And then uh, 3.548. Okay, interpret the confidence interval. It says um, we are 95% confident that the mean difference between mean number of scores in link A, mean number of scores in link B is between, it does not contain zero, so that would be incorrect. 0.318. And 3.548. It does not contain zero, so there is sufficient evidence to conclude there's a difference between the two scores. All right, let's check that. And that's all correct. All right. Um, here uh, we are looking at what kind of a test should we use. Um, we've mainly talked about. Yeah, population standard deviations. No, we haven't really talked about that one. Uh, we mainly talked about um, one population proportion, two population proportion, one mean, two means, and then a matched pair uh, of means. So that's kind of what we're working with is those those five types that we've talked about through this entire semester, pretty much, um, for these hypothesis testing. And so you got to figure out which one it is that you need to use, and that'll kind of guide you whether or not you're looking at a proportion or a mean or a match pair, that kind of stuff. So we have a random sample size, uh, random sample of size 31 results in a sample mean, so we know it's a mean, not, not a proportion right off the bat. 124.3 uh, and a standard deviation of 8.5. An independent sample of size N2 is 50, the sample mean of 131 and 7.3. So we have two different means, and it says an independent sample. So they're both random and they're both independent of each other. So we have um, the hypothesis test regarding the difference of two means. So this one is, of course, between two population proportions. That's not what we have. We're not looking at standard deviations here. We're looking at the means. And this is for matched pairs design and that only affects dependent samples. These are independent, it says it right there, independent, so therefore we use uh, two means using Welch, uh, Welch's approximate T or the, or, the, or the student T test. Okay, so we can continue with that. Um, we've already actually shown that um, in the previous problem, um, but the idea is that the means are the same. This is definitely not gonna be B. And then it says, does this constitute sufficient evidence to conclude the population means differ? So in other words, that they are not equal. That's all we care about is if they're, they're not equal. Okay, and now we can continue with the actual um, testing this thing. So we have data, sorry, stat, T stats, two, two independent samples, and we have a summary of the data. Okay, sample one says, 124.3, 8.5, 31. Sample 2 is 131.8, 7.3, and a sample size of 50. We want a hypothesis test where they're equal to zero and then not equal to zero. That should be good. We don't care about any of that stuff so we can just compute. And here we have our data. P-value is 0 0.0001. Definitely um, sufficient evidence. Uh, alpha is 0 0.05, p-value is less than that. Yeah, there's, there's definitely. There is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha. Not greater than, less than. And that's all correct. Okay, last problem. 
in one month, national mean price per gallon of gasoline was 3.109. The data here represents a random sample of 20 gas stations uh, in gas in city A, more expensive than the nation. Assume the data comes from a normal population with no outliers. So what we have here Um, there's only one set of data, and it's only for gas in city A. There's no city B. There's not two. There's not two populations. So it can't be two populations. Can't be two means. Can't be two population proportions. The only one here that could be is a single proportion, single population mean, because we're talking about means here, not not proportions. There's there's no successes and failures. And it is only a single population. So we know that this is the hypothesis test. This is, of course, back in a couple chapters ago. So all we're going to have to do is just the normal normal um, um, thing we have here. So first off, we're asking if the mean equals zero. Sorry, the mean equals the, <laughs> the, stated, the stated mean, which is 3.109. That's the natural one. And now we're asking, is it more expensive? Is the mean greater than 3.109? And that's what we're going to be looking at here. OK. So let's open StatCrunch. We have data. We're doing a t-stat of one sample, not two, with the data. Uh, equals 3.109 greater than that's all we need and here you can see well p-value is super small yeah no level of significance is stated here you can see there's no alpha stated anywhere but the p-value is zero, so it's well, it's not zero. It's very, very, very small. Um, so you don't need a, need a level of significance. It's it's incredibly small. So p-value is so small um, that the null hypothesis can be rejected. There is sufficient evidence to conclude the gas prices today are higher than the national average, and that's all correct. <laughs>